This is so exciting to me. It's so exciting to me because he asked us all to pay the same price. And he gives us this crazy amount of his life and grace. And you know what? The reason this is the crazy initiative of grace is God does it and he doesn't have to. Like, he invites the people to the party and they go, I'm living, I'm buying houses and lands and I'm going on honeymoons. And he could just go, "Uh, well, they're busy, I'll wait them out. Or he could, it could turn him on to really wanting the inaccessible people. Oh, man, he bought a house. Ah, you know what, I'll see if he's free next week. He's the kind of guy I want at my party, man. Because I saw his house. And it's good. It's nice. Oh, he got it. He bought a new car. Maybe he'd give me a spin. We're going to wait. We're going to throw another party next week. Got to have this dude at our party. Oh, they're on their honeymoon. That's cool. They get, do you know where they went? Let me tell you where they went. It's two weeks of paradise. They get back. We're going to throw another party because you're going to want them at the pool party. They are something. Just put everything away. Put it in the storage. Put it in the freezer. I'm going to throw this again in two weeks. We'll get them in. That could be God's way. I know I'm being sarcastic. I'm trying to stay with the story a little bit. What that would sound like is that God goes, I can wait out those of you that can do it. You're my kind of people. Come on, man. Get with it. That's a strong survive. I'm here to pull. Wait, waiting for you. I'm rooting you on. We're going to make it home someday. Or he could have just went the next level and went, you know what? Kind of ticks me off. They didn't want to show up, but you know what? Fine. Go get the poor and the lame and the blind because they've never been to a party and I'm going to bless them. And go get them because they don't have the ability to throw their own party. They're blind and they're lame and they're poor. They don't have money. They can't see. They can't walk. They got to have people do it for them. I'm going to be a good charitable guy. I'm going to do it for them. Heaven's a place of charity. God helps those who can't help themselves. Legs are broken. I'm going to pick them up. Eyes are blind. I'm going to help them out. I'm going to bless you when you can't be blessed. I'm going to bless you when you can't work. I'm going to bless you when you're down. And and we would have been okay with that. But Dad Gummit, he crosses the line when he goes to that third level. Because that third level is the crazy initiative of grace. Because the master doesn't tell his servant, go out and get everybody else left because I love them. He says, go out and get them because you can. I'm God. I get to have anybody I want. So I'm not going to the highways and the byways because I love them, although I do. I'm going because they're there. And I have a big house. And I want to fill it. And I know it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to put this much grace in the world. And this third level don't even know me. Some of them don't even care. It's okay. Go get them. Bring them in. When Matthew 22 tells this same story, Matthew tells a different version, but it's essentially the same. It gets to the end of the story, and there's all these people. The Matthew version really blow your mind, because the Matthew version says he tells them, go out into the highways and bring in the good and the bad. Oh, God. (laughs) Good and the bad. How do you bring the bad in to eat? (laughs) Okay? Bring in the good and the bad. And he gets to the end of the night and there's a guy in the party without a wedding garment on. And the master calls him up and goes, hey, where's your wedding garment? And he's, I don't have a wedding garment. And the master kicks him out of the party where he goes, where the worm dieth not, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You go, oh, wait, wait a minute. What happened? Matthew's version gives us the one detail that Luke's version leaves out that we need if we really want to land somewhere on it is this. Contextually, let's go back first century. When that woman gave herself to that man in marriage, she gave him every single thing she was. Every dime, every dollar, every hope, every dream, and even let him swallow up her last name. She took his name. She took his identity. She became who he is. What happened when the woman came into marriage with the man is that she came underneath whatever he is and she brought whatever she was into it. You get to the end of the party and the master walks around and sees someone without a wedding robe on and they get kicked out. Why? Because it's the one person that tried to get in without paying the price. And what's the price? Everything you got. 
If you're going to come in, you come in as mine, he says. I got you. I take care of you. But you got to give me everything. You don't get to cheat and play on the side. It's me and you. It's not me, you, and somebody else. It's us. It's all of you. It's all of me together in the kingdom. I love this story in a way that I've never loved it before. Not in that it's helping me figure out how it all ends, because quite frankly, this story is not about how it all ends. If I get stuck on how it all ends, I'm going to miss that I'm supposed to be doing something for the poor, the widow, and the stranger, and the blind. (laughs) And that's my job. Did you know there's over 2,000 references to helping the poor, the widow, the blind, the stranger, and the sojourner in the Bible? Over 2,000. You know how many times the word gospel is used? A hundred. Why is it 20 times more important to God to tell us to take care of the people that can't take care of themselves than it is for us to preach the gospel? Maybe it's because preaching the gospel is taking care of the poor and the widow and the stranger and the blind and the sojourner. The gospel's more than, hey, don't you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? No, the gospel is good news. A king came for you in the middle of your poor, blind, wretched, miserable, and naked selves. Oh, you want to come in? What's the cost? What do you got? You go. You go. All I got's me. And he goes, welcome home. Everybody pays the same price. Yeah, but he's got more. Don't worry about him. All I want out of him is everything he is. All I want out of you is everything you want. And I'm going to bless you with everything daddy has. What's it cost? What do you got? I love that thought. Not what's it cost. It varies, but even in the law, it varied based on where you were. You know, some, if you were wealthy, you sacrificed a bull. If you were a little rich, not quite as rich, you sacrificed a goat, then a lamb, then a pigeon, then a couple of turtle doves. But when you get to the cross, he goes, hey, you're all going to die anyway. So bring me what you got. You can put it in my death, and I'll give you what I got, and, you know, and we can put it in my resurrection. And together, we go to Dad's banquet. And all I ask is that you put on the wedding robe. Because the wedding robe shows that you and I belong to each other. This is the gospel. And it is good news. I'm glad that I cannot tell you who all gets into the party, but I do know that who gets into the party gave everything they had. I don't mean they gave all their effort. I mean they gave all of themselves. It's not read more, pray more, give more, fast more. Mm -mm -mm. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's here I am. That's all I got. But see, if I give you all I got, that's not, we, all, we think that's the good stuff. No, that's everything I've got. That's everything I've got. My guilt, my shame, my sin, my pain, my problems, my secrets, my darkness, my doubts, my fears, my hatred. I give it to you. You get it. And that means you and I are going to go on the mat once in a while because I don't give that stuff up easily. I don't give my abuse, my molestation, my pain. I don't give that easily. So you and I are going to duke it out, God. And he goes, that's all right. Welcome to the party.